Now I have a question. What would that do? That would totally nullify that miracle and therefore no faith, no ability for God to move, no ability for John to be born. Don't tell me a wrong confession isn't big to God. It's very big to God. So much so God says, you ain't messing this one up, boy. We're going to shut your mouth up. And you're not going to be able to say a word against it because that way you cannot stop my plan from happening. Can you say amen? Because John had to come. There had to be a forerunner to Jesus to prepare the way for the Lord. But God's will is not such in your life that it has to be done. You have a right to the life as God has it. But your confession has everything to do with it. So don't tell me a wrong confession isn't important because if it wasn't, then why in the world did he shut Zach's mouth up? We are talking, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about God Almighty saying, this is what I'm going to do. But yet, even though God said, I'm going to do this, Zach could have nullified what God said he was going to do. Because if that's not true, he wouldn't have had to shut his mouth up. It wouldn't matter what Zacharias said. Christians don't get this. God cannot work in your life with a wrong confession. You are blockading his ability to bring to pass what you have a right to as a child of God. If you're speaking consistently with a wrong confession. Now let's go to James 3. Let's go to the, the, the book of all books and chapter of all chapters in, New, in the New Testament about our words. Because we not only need to learn again how important they are, but we need to learn how to change this. What do we do about it? Because James is going to tell us something very significant as it relates to how we deal with this. It almost sounds like in James' writings here, he's contradicting himself. Because you're going to find out, James is going to start off saying, your tongue is very powerful.